early risers welcome back to your favorite morning program dbs this morning i'm your girl jacka wooding and i'm glad that you're joining us starting out your day today yes it is wednesday so you've already made it to the middle of the week so i'm gonna make sure that you have the energy and the good vibes that you're going to need to carry you on through the other half without further ado let's make sure that you wake up in the know with our morning news highlights Good morning, Tam. Now for a summary of your top stories. Education Minister Sean Edwards says heavy emphasis is being placed on developing a modern curriculum for technical vocational training in St. Lucia to meet the demands of the changing job market. Four secondary schools have been identified for conversion into TVET learning institutions. This is the buzz concept in the Ministry of Education at the moment. Um, we have recognized that our education system needs to move from a one-size-fits-all to have programs that are more streamlined. And one of the areas we want to focus on is, is skills training for young people. Too many students in our school system are being forced to do subject areas for which they don't have the aptitude, they don't have a liking for. And then you, you, you put them through very rigorous examination processes that they can't cope with, and then we, we label them as failures. I think this is wrong, this is inhumane. The education minister, along with technocrats from his ministry, will be discussing their proposal with donor representatives from the European Union. The Cabinet of Ministers has approved several incentives for event promoters and carnival bands who have been endorsed by the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, Cultural Development Foundation, CDF, and the Carnival Planning and Management Committee, the CPMC. These include 100% waiver of corporation tax for the income years 2020 to 2023. 100% waiver of import duty on material imported by carnival bands and event promoters and 100% waiver of customs fees for St. Lucia Carnival 2022 as well as 100% exemption from withholding tax for artists and performers at the events for Carnival 2022. St. Lucians are being asked to learn to measure their blood pressure accurately as a way to control hypertension and reduce morbidity and mortality. When measuring blood pressure, measurements must be done following the appropriate technique and using a validated blood pressure monitor. Persons are encouraged to contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards to verify whether the blood pressure monitor being used or purchased is validated. Blood pressure monitors which are not validated can give inaccurate re readings and lead to dangerous consequences. World Hypertension Day was observed on May 17th under the theme, Measure Your Blood Pressure Accurately, Control It, Live Longer. Minister for Home Affairs Virginia Albert Poyot embarked on a tour of police and fire stations on the eastern coast of the island earlier this month. The minister visited a Rich Four police station, followed by the police and fire stations in Denry. The Miku Fire and Police Stations also received a courtesy call from the minister and her entourage. In recognition of the observance of the Fire Service Day on May 4th, the Home Affairs Minister took the opportunity to acknowledge the significant contribution made by the first responders, specifically throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, and she conveyed the appreciation and concern of Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre, who is also the Minister for National Security. And those are your top stories. Thanks for watching. Good morning. That's a wrap for our morning news highlights. Right now, we're kicking it into a... No. Three, two, and one. That's a wrap for our morning news highlights. Right now, we're heading into a quick commercial break, but keep it locked. We'll be right back. Welcome back, DBS family. Those of you who are in tune with what's going on locally, I know we all try to be, would know that last week, Youth Parliament was on. It started on Wednesday and then Senate took place on Thursday. So today we're touching base with who I'd like to call the man himself. I mean, I've always wanted to say this, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> we're here with Alan Splant, who actually served as Speaker of the House for Youth Parliament this year. So, I mean, just to start things off, what was that experience like for you? Well, the experience was a bit different in the case that... Um, I adjusted seats before I, we went into debate during the announcements um, as following the protocol of the House. 
Um, I told the debaters that I am now adjusting seats as once a debater or once a shadow representative to now the presiding officer. And I felt honored to be the presiding officer. For me, the experience was a lot more different than being a debater because the Speaker of the House um, comes with great responsibility. They say uneasy lies ahead, which wears the crown, which is true. With the role of the Speaker, you are the presiding officer. You command great authority over the proceedings. And just taking myself off as a member, a then debater to now Speaker, was just different. Um, there was in the case where... Um, I have to remember everybody's speeches because in the house, if a member stands on a point of order, I have to remember what that member was saying and, you know, to make a ruling on the matter. So there were many different, just, there were many occasions where it just felt so different um, and it means a lot to me, you know, just being the presiding officer and being the one, you know, being called or looked at as Mr. Speaker. All eyes on you, all conversation goes through you, everything goes through you. And I mean, you spoke of the transition, I mean, to being speaker now. So what was it like looking at this year's crop of debaters? Well, for me, um, it was hard because it, uh, looking from the speaker's perspective, you don't really engage yourself in debate unless, you know, you really have to go with the standing orders where a member is maybe going against the rules of order or going against the standing orders. You know, one of the rules of the house is being breached. You know, you really engage yourself. And this time with it, engaging a national bill which was passed in the parliament and, um, and, and a national policy is something I hold dear at heart. It was different and hard not being in the chamber with those cohort of young, brilliant parliamentarians where I couldn't add my voice to the debate. I mean, outside, I can really add my voice without the speaker's hat on my head. But being in the chamber, it was, you know, a bit difficult watching them debate. And, you know, I cannot say this, so I'm providing suggestions in my head because, you know, you're just neutral. So um, transitioning from the debater to the speaker, it was a bit hard in that aspect. All right. Did any um, of this year's youth parliamentarians stand out in terms of their debates? I mean, I've heard a lot of people highlighting different speeches. So, you know, did anybody stand out for you? Well, you see, as speaker, you know, most of the times you can't really give an opinion on that. I think for me, the option that I would give, I think all my youth, all my members um, stood out in the chamber, both in the Senate and in the lower house, those under my purview. So, um, Maybe if I'd really have to choose people, you know, really stood out, I'd maybe say the member for Cashry Southeast who was John Tench. But I think um, apart from that, all in all, all my youth parliamentarians were just excellent in the chamber. Okay, wonderful. I know ahead of um, actually taking the bit, there was a training process. There was a lot to go down. So... Do you believe that maybe prior to youth parliament, maybe that should be something we um, address in schools? I know you, for sure, you are the young man, one of few that I know is very informed about everything that's going on locally. I mean, if I need to know something about parliament or if I need to understand something about standing orders, you're the one I would come to. So, you know, do you think that enough is being done to pass that on to young people right now? Well, like I was, I, I was having the conversation once with our speaker, Honorable Claudius Francis, and we were all saying that these cohort of parliamentarians actually do have something excellent at the tip of their fingers, that they get to be in the chamber, one of the high, well, is the highest decision-making body in the land. If cabinet wants to make a decision, if a law or motion wants to be passed, they need to go to parliament. Um, and not many people are privy to such knowledge of the standing orders, of, no, of having knowledge to sit in such an august chamber. Um, I think that in the school's aspect, for me, for one, I always advocate for it. Um, I think it is important as a member of civil society, a citizen, a young citizen as a student should know um, how a bill becomes an act of parliament, how statutory instruments are passed, the standing orders of the house. They don't really have to go in depth with the standing orders, but just the procedure of legislation when it comes from AG chambers until it's, it reaches its royal assent from the governor general, until it's gazetted. So I think that um, young people must at least know the constitution, must at least know the procedures of the house and I think um, we did have it we have it in social studies um, under government but I think more in our civics curriculum
curriculum, um, deeper in our social studies curriculum, we should make a child understand why they must pay attention to budget debate, what is happening, um, um, when a bill is going through its stages, why is a government maybe making it go through all three stages and not going for it to go um, through civil society so civil society can analyze. So I think it is important um, that the young citizens, especially students, know the procedures of the house. All right. Well, powerful statements for us to keep in mind throughout the day and maybe even in the household. Do your part as an adult, as a member of the voting population to ensure that the voters of the future are informed about this important information. Alan, thank you so much for okay. speaking with us today. And I think maybe we might have to have our own little civics sessions on the morning show in future where we can highlight some of the points that you discussed. It could just be something simple as know your constitution, you know, you relate to one section of the constitution today. It could be section one, two, three or one, two, two, I think, which is, it's the supreme law of the land. You know, every morning just give people a little insight on the laws so that they can know where they stand, so that they can know their rights are not trampled on, so they can know what parliament is, what the public service commission is. It's just those simple things are important for us to know as citizens. All right, DBS family, so we have something to discuss, we have something to work on, and that should be coming to you very soon. As for right now, we're heading to a quick commercial break, so keep it locked, you're watching DBS. <music> DBS family, right now we are coming to you from the Dream Plaza in Bonte. And you know, this is no new place to us. And Kizi is no new face to our camera. We're so happy to be speaking with you again today. I mean, Wings of Love is a member of the DBS family. And I know from what you said, you're getting ready to set us up to step out in style for all the events this year. Yes, we are. There are lots of events coming in and we're excited about it. It's been too long. <laughs> it's been way too long. So I could only imagine that Wings of Love has had the time to study the market and ensure that they have every single unique piece that you could be looking for for you to step out to these events. Yes. So here we have the conservative dress hair for the mothers. Also, if you just want to look pretty, you have a a wedding to attend, you could always use this semi-formal dress. Here we have our neon colors. Carnival is coming. Yeah. So we here we all here for the bright colors. So you could dress this up and you could dress this down. All right. I mean, you're working with a lot of versatility. In addition to that, I've seen crop tops. I've seen body suits. I've seen fitted dresses, formal dresses, all kinds of stuff. So Wings of Love has managed to pack a lot into this store and, you know, give people a lot of variety when they visit. Yes. Also, we have our work attire here. We have our jackets and we have our skirts. We have our work shirts also. So basically everything. All right, so no matter where you're going, even if you're getting ready for your birthday, you're getting ready for a new job, Wings of Love is the place to be. Yes, it is the place to be. At the dream, it's the place to be. You can't go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, DBS family. So we're going to take a look. Javon is going to take you around, take a look at what's available. And we're going to head for a quick commercial break after that. So keep it locked. We'll be right back.
morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's Soka Size session. Leading the wine, we have Sarah, Lori, and Shani. Let's get ready to sweat with Soka Size. For this morning's workout, we will be doing a wine and tone routine to Moonlight by TJ. Let's begin. One second, let them know this. So we're going to just move the hips side to side. We're going to go down and up. Down. Nice and gentle. And up. Hip. Hit. And. And you squeeze in the core. Four. Three. Two. Next side. And. Four. Three. Two. Hip. Going up and down. Up. Two, three, roll it. Again, hip. Roll it. Give yourself some love. Down. Take it up. Side. Four, three, two, switch, and. Four, three, two, hip, up and down. Roll it. Hip. Roll it. And love. Take it up. Hip and love all you are move right. Put your more than two. Four. Three. Two. Next side. And don't be roof light. Go in a fridge for some cool ice. Four. Three. Two hip. Up and down. And Roll it. Next side. Hip. Roll it. Give yourself some love. Take it up. That was this morning's session. Thank you for choosing to flaunt with Soka Size. We hope that you're feeling sexy, sultry, and strong. Hello again, DBS family. Yes, we have come to the end of today's show. But it's time for you to go out there and shine and be great. I know sometimes Monday and Tuesday take a lot of energy out of you and it can be difficult to kick off your Wednesday. But I hope after today's show and spending time with us here on DBS this morning that you have the energy that you need to go off and have a great one. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again tomorrow and for the rest of the week. Thank you so much for always tuning in. I'll see you then. Thank you.